today's exercise is to do a quick and simple watercolour painting of um, a puppy. In this case I'm going to use um, some photographs um, of, this, this, well in this case, uh, a beagle puppy, but there are plenty of others you can find if either of your own um, uh, dog or on the internet and so forth. Um, I want a fairly uncomplicated uh, painting um, and I'm just going to do the head, I'm not going to worry about too much else with the body and the paws and so forth. Um, I find that photographs with um, dogs with the, the paws can cause problems in that you've got to bring the paws forward whilst at the same time keeping the, uh, the head as the focal point and that can be uh, problematical. Um, I also tend to see a lot of dog portraits or cat portraits for that matter where the muzzle um, this area here um, is not forward enough. That's part of the problem with a straight-on portrait of a dog. You've got the, the nose, the muzzle and so forth coming out from the head and that uh, therefore needs special attention. Um, but we'll go through that as, as we do the painting. So, um, and the other thing that uh, I just want to point out is that very often we get a fair amount of light captured on the top of the head not so much perhaps in this uh, photograph um, and that light can be used to sh um, give shape to the top of the head but the only way you can do that is to have a contrasting colour in the background um, allowing you to leave the light on the top of the head um, and I'm going to do a little bit of that um, as well so this is my sketch um, giving it fairly simple uh, going for the major lines and going for um, uh, or highlighting with a pencil um, the sort of light and dark areas. So you can see here that I've used a line here around the muzzle and the face. There it is on the photograph to um, designate the areas which are light and which are which are dark. I'm going to start off. Oh, well, before I. Um, uh, do that just to say about the colours. I'm using Winsor Newton watercolours. Um, I'm going to start off with yellow ochre. Um, you could use raw sienna. Uh, so that's very much for the uh, the, the, the light areas. Um, I'm going to use one of my most favourite colours, burnt sienna, which is a lovely, lovely um, uh, light brown with plenty of red in it. And the dark areas I'll be using Winsor Newton um, burnt umber. And where I want it really dark, I shall be using a combination of burnt umber and um, cobalt blue, uh, or even perhaps um, Payne's grey. So having got the colours sorted out, because I want to keep it very soft, um, I'm going to spray the portrait. And the areas where I don't want quite so much water because I want it to be slightly, I want the lines to be slightly harder. Um, I'm just going to try that a little bit with a with a tissue. Okay, and then I'm going to go straight in um, with some yellow ochre. In this case, I'm going to work directly from the um, the tube because I want to get maximum pigment. Onto the painting, so we can go over the dark areas with that. Gets us going. I'm going to leave the white areas too, uh, just to add interest.
I wanted to be quite sketchy. Um, take that off there. And because I want to capture the light on the top of the the head, I'm going to just bring some there you go, some of that out. And use the tissue just to keep that top area of the head light. So this is me going into a simple and uh, sketchy background. and use this background to help define the shape of the head. Whilst that's still wet I'm just going to use a little bit of burnt sienna in the background there, stroke it in a little bit so I want to leave the white on top of the head to define its shape. I need to just make that slightly, tonally slightly darker. That's fine. Now I'm going to use the yellow ochre again, I haven't got that going. Um, if it starts to get too dry you can respray with water. And I'm just going to work the, the stickier yellow ochre into the darker areas. To start defining some of their shapes. And all the time beginning to think about how we can make this head, this rounder shape, start to look three-dimensional. I'm working in quite a warm room so uh, I might have to just respray it with water in a second just to uh, Make sure I don't end up with too many damp edges where uh, hard edges where I don't want them to occur. Yeah. In fact that's getting quite quite dry, so I'm gonna give that a quick spray. Don't overdo the spray and if you don't want the spray to go on certain areas you can mask them off with a bit of paper or tissue or whatever. You can see the light now beginning to show up on the top of the head. So as I say, just adding a yellow worker onto the dark areas. Now, the yellow worker has gone to some areas that I want to leave white um, down the, the centre of the, the, the muzzle here. So I'm just going to use a hungry brush, which is a brush which is clean but damp, um, just to take off some of that yellow ochre that has spread onto the, that area there. That's good. Uh, 
as you'll find that with yellow ochre it doesn't have a great tonal range and therefore you can only go so far in making areas darker when you're using it. Okay, so now whilst that's still wet I'm going to use some Sienna. And you can see this lovely, this Winter Newton burnt sienna is absolutely gorgeous. It's a really lovely colour. Using it directly from the tube. Working quickly. So I'm concentrating this into the, the dark areas. And putting the paint on, stroking it in the same direction as the, the hairs. As I said before, just trying to introduce the light, light, lights in the dark so that um, we get this three-dimensional effect. So it's getting just a little bit dry again, so I'm just going to spray it. And now I'm going to introduce some burnt umber. Again working into the dark areas. I'm working with or in the same direction as the, the actual hairs themselves using the side of the brush and just grazing it down like this gives lovely soft areas follow the photograph but don't be too pedantic um, if you put a brush mark in which you think oh yes I, for instance I like that then even though it's not quite the same as the photograph leave it and I'm just going to use again a, a hungry brush here that's a damp brush which is roughly relatively clean and just soften some of those edges there there yeah see how that's kind of lovely and soft dark area here where there's a sort of a shadow from cast by the ear so we'll just amplify that a little bit So this process of working wet into wet, I find allows you to build some real character 
into your paintings. So where paint has moved into an area you don't want because it's still wet, you can use, as I say, this hungry brush and just move it around a little bit. soften edges just as you need. And where you want a bit of fuzziness, if you wet an area like that, just spread out of it, and then just kiss it with a bit of the, uh, the colour, you'll find when they hit each other that we we'll end up with this sort of nice fuzzy area which I've got up here where it's too tight and too hard just again introduce a little bit of water, move the paint around a bit, a bit. That has a little bit of water. Okay. Now, this area here would we'll be careful with because um, the actual nose itself is going to be quite dark, but the area around it's quite dark. So to get a differentiation between the two, we've just got to get a little bit of total difference in there. Don't want it to be too hard around that surface. Just soften that a little bit. Come back to that again later on. Now to give this muzzle shape here, or give it some shape, um, I'm going to just introduce a little bit of tone. You don't need very much. Straight away you can see you've got, you're actually defining the shape of the bottom of the mouth area there with, because it's, it's, it's positive and negative painting. That's uh, overrun a little bit there, so we'll get rid of that. And just, the more you want to give shape to that sort of area, the way to do it is to put a, a darker tone beside it, so we'll just drop it. Oh, that's wet. It's a little bit of burnt umber. Straight away that starts to then drag that out a little bit. Straight away that gives shape. This area here is all in shadow, so we'll just give that a little bit more tone.
and I know they just use a little touch of cobalt there was a little bit of shadow a bit too much perhaps in this area so the white fur there is not completely white but the same on this area here too very very light and a little bit up here too okay now to bring that nozzle further forward I put a little bit of blue on there which is a cold color but it just gives it a bit of shading um, but to bring a white muzzle like that um, further forward, what I tend to do is use a bit of alizé and crimson. A bit too much there. And just bring it, and that just helps to bring that area forward. And a red colour just helps to just. Drag that area out from the face. Don't want too much there. Just take that off. Why do this? That looks quite good. Leave that. And that just helps to drag it forward slightly. Okay. A little bit of soft blending there. And a bit of burn tumper. Any colour which has got a lovely red in it, like the burnt umber, like the burnt sienna, used here yeah, we'll move things forward which is good So the next thing I do is um, work on his nose. Now you'll see from the picture here, and even more from this one, I know this is a different dog, but um, there's a fair amount of light on that. Um, and when we have black, um, to get the light very often it's a good idea to paint the whole area first of all with a blue, um, ultramarine or cobalt then introduce the darker area by using um, the same blue again mixed with burnt umber um, leaving the light areas and that's usually fairly effective so um, I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt just to get that going Leave the lightest areas white.
So now I'm going to use a combination of the blue and some burnt umber. Which gives me quite a, a warm uh, black. So we can just put that inside there. There's a white highlight just around the edge there, so I don't want to. And again, it's a case of trying to make it look as three-dimensional as you can by using the, the lights and the darks. So that's beginning to come. So I'm going to make up another blue and brown mix, but this time a little bit stickier. Working carefully and leaving the light areas light. I haven't got quite enough light there on the left hand side, but we'll do that by removing some colour later on. Just going to soften around the edges there with a damp brush. Blend that in so it looks as though it's part of the face part of the head rather than an addition to it. So I've retained the highlight there and now I can start to just knock it back a little bit, just blend it a little bit where it's not quite so significant. It's made a good start. I'll just let that dry a little bit now. So I've dried the nose a little bit. <clears throat> I want to get a little bit more shape onto it. So you can see there's a nice light area here uh, where that blue is coming through. I'm just going to lighten that a little bit more with, again, I'm using a damp or hungry brush, just removing. Blending and removing some of the colour there, just to highlight that. Um, soften this little bit of highlight here too. You want the highlight to be white in this case, but not glowing white. It's a little bit too much perhaps, I need to put some tone back into that. And then just give a little bit of a where you've got this distinction between the left and the right, just, just remove a little bit of colour there. Um, just up here on top of the nostril we get a little little highlight, not too much. That's okay. Right, um, so I'm just going to fill around here a little bit, blend this in a little bit more. Give us a 
little bit more burnt umber just to the main thing is to make as I said before make these things look as a part of the face rather than something that's just been added on Softening the areas there. Okay. And I'm going to use bit of a combination of that blue and black again it's like blue um, blue and brown just to darken up one or two of these areas around the eyes Now, the eyeballs are spheres, they're round, um, and so where we've got this white of the eye, we need to add a little bit of shading, a few marks, just to make the eyeball look what it is, i.e. round, rather than just flat. There's a nice big highlight on the um, around the pupil too, so we'll just case of just playing around a little bit and you find that the sort of horrible dirty mix that you've got left in parts of your palette just right for um, some of these shadow areas so over here this eye is quite dark.
you really can't see much of the pupil at all from the photograph. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight in there. Very often around the iris you find a very dark area, dark line. So I'll just use that just to help define the shape a little bit. So using contrast there, light and dark, to give shape. So we're getting close to the finish now. Um, I want to just soften up some of the areas. We'll come back to that in a second. We're almost there now. Um, I've defined this right hand ear here a little bit by showing just a little bit of the, the um, the colour of the body as it goes back. I don't want to put the body in, I don't want to go that far, but I just want to use the, the um, tone there just to show the shape of the ear. Let's put it all dark in. So it's dark against light, positive and negative, just to give us a little bit of, oops, maybe do it too much there. Give us a little bit of shape. That's fine. That's okay. And the same down here too. So we're nearly um, nearly finished now. Um, I'm going to add just one or two little hairs using burnt umber. Um, some people when they do furry animals like this, you often see this on hairs. I mean hairs as, as an H-A-R-E and uh, rabbits and things like that, that um, some artists will spend absolutely hours putting in, almost stroking in virtually every every hair. Um, what I do is I just suggest little areas where there's some hairs. As one professional artist said to me some years ago, when you're painting a forest you paint perhaps just two or three or four trees and the rest you put in as shapes and you allow the eye of the observer to fill in the rest. It's a bit like um, if you have a, a Georgian facade, a, a large old building with loads of windows and, and so forth you don't necessarily want to paint every individual window. 
paint one or two close to the eye and then block the others in very very lightly very very loosely just to give the indication that um, what is there so I think that's about as much as I'm going to do with the, the bow and tumbler that's fine um, just put a few more little darks in um, and here just to define the edge there of the, the um, muzzle and the ear the same here too a little bit of tone there showing where the rest of the body comes um, but doing it in such a way that it helps to find that area and then to finish off um, I use a bit of white gouache again with a fine brush just to indicate some whiskers. You can get white pens that will do this as well, so the Posca pens which are very good. I prefer to do it with um, a fine brush and some white gouache. Because there's a little bit less control and I think um, oops if you have too much the pen the pen gives you a little bit too much control it, it actually stullifies the picture and takes away from the the looseness okay I think that's about it so what we've done is we have used a fairly light tone in the background to help define the shape of the top of the head which is getting most light therefore it's quite it's quite white um, but just subtle there nothing too um, contrasty um, so lovely wet into wet here where sort of fur is sort of blending into the background a little bit so you get a nice soft area there so what you want is a combination of soft areas and hard areas um, a little bit of highlight here and there you can use the white gouache again just to help there too and keep it nice and loose well I hope you enjoyed that I enjoyed painting that I always enjoy painting animals um, in a, a loose wet into wet way um, giving the palette down so we just use yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, touch of blue and then a little bit of ozone crimson here and there and so forth um, keeping it nice and simple and loose so I enjoyed doing that I hope you enjoyed watching and um, good luck with your own painting thank you for watching